Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're on Act Natural, and we are going to be seeing Cron Aberrant against Ferreter. And I know we've seen Cron Aberrant a lot recently, but he's been uploading a lot of games. He's been playing a lot, uploading a lot of games to game replays, and that's where I get the replays from. So if you want to see your games on here, then upload them to game replays, and make sure to put down what your lobby settings were. They're not saved in the replays, I need to actually set them beforehand. So, write those in, just run through the whole list of settings. If you open up a quick play, you'll see what settings you had last set if you hosted the game. Anyway, Ferret are getting started with Grekim and Kronhammer going with CISO. So Kronhammer, I think he's going random these games. And once again, we're on Assassin mode. Kronhammer setting up a couple RPs very quickly, probably get an import. Well, see if he gets an import soon or gets another RP. Probably get another RP. Act Natural's a large enough map you can get away with that. Even Felsic, we saw Felsic Inferno last game, and that's a same size, but it's closer start positions, and that worked fine with an economic start. So I think this will work fine too. Ferret, on the other hand, is going also for an economic start. He does have another Octo for scouting alongside his Akron, which is heading steadily towards Ferret's base. Well, sorry, Kronhammer's base. Well, Kronhammer is sending over his Akron to Ferret's base. And Ferret is just building up. Both players just building up quite calmly. And there's a 4th RP. I think a 5th and 6th RP will be coming up shortly. There's the 5th RP. Crimer probably will be getting a 6th fairly soon. Since he can get away with it. And Special Ops and Marine are fighting that Guardian Akron, but not really able to do too much to it. Really just manages a deterrent at this point, getting it out of the way. It's not. They're not going to kill it in any decent amount of time. And if they do, Ferreter will just pull it back. Won't let it go in the first place. Similarly, Kron Aberrant's Akron going forward with an Octo possibly intercepting it. Though, Ferreter's base does not have any units other than that Octo. Actually, even that Octo isn't, strictly speaking, inside Ferreter's base. So, Kron Aberrant getting a free view of everything inside Ferreter's base. And also seeing a very quick QP, QPRP. Could be leading to early tech, or it could be just because Ferreter thinks he needs to do that for the early Octopod. Which he does, or might. Against CISO... It's not a bad idea. Early ATHCs are a thing that have happened. Given that there aren't really any signs of ATHCs or imports or anything like that, and Crown is floating a bit of resources, but we are further ahead in the future than when he actually is. And when he actually is, he is not floating resources. He's also not building any proxy factors or anything worrisome like that. So, nothing to worry about, but Ferret is being cautious, and with Grekum, it's wise to be cautious. Get that early Octopod and keep yourself alive. Always a good idea. Now, Crown of course, not going for early rush of any sort. And this Octo here getting destroyed by the Special Ops and Marine. Nice micro them by Cron Aberrant. Moving the Special Ops away, keeping it from being killed by the Octo. And this Akron will likely be pulled back. Ferreter just hasn't gotten around to it yet. But when he does, that will be... Well, that'll be pulling it back. It won't die. Ferreter won't let it die, I'm sure. And Cron Aberrant will be setting up from here. Not sure he's going to get an importer anytime soon. He doesn't appear to be keen on doing so. He doesn't appear to be... I would be a bit surprised if he wasn't going to expand it with his marine. Try to build a couple RPs out somewhere else, because this map is fairly large. There's a lot of places you could build RPs. But I don't see him doing that right now. I do see him scouting out, and I do see him double-checking this attack and making sure that he doesn't lose this to Ferreter, but Ferreter hasn't apparently re that at all. And he was going purely for Octopod, so Ferreter getting that Octopod up so his defense will be quite solid, at least for now, and Crown Aberrant not really bothering to even try to deal with that defense, just going for his economy. Finally getting an importer after the 5th RP, but likely we'll get a 6th RP on top of this. And there we go, Ferret moving that Akron back. Might be intercepted by, probably will be intercepted by this infantry. Crown Aberrant has not moved it, or at least he doesn't appear to have moved it at the point in time that Ferret is focused on. No, Crown Aberrant is moving forward, he is trying to attack Ferret's base, and Ferret actually had moved his... Akron back earlier. Looks like Ferreter might be attacked by these infantry, but Cronhammer doesn't appear to be committing to this assault, so Cronhammer will be just staying in the middle of the map, keeping tabs on what's going on there, but not really doing too much. And an Octo actually managed, the Octo managing to get around the infantry and get into Cronhammer's base. Cronhammer does appear to be aware of this, has not noticed the fact that the Octo is right here. And getting a second import as well, jumping, actually, same time. Crammer is going for a factory at the 258 mark. Yeah, pointing out in the chat that yes, my upload rate is fairly low, unfortunately. 
It's difficult to get high upload rate where I live, so apparently it is. So I have to map it through DX3 and then through open broadcaster software. It works well. It's just when it fails, it tends to fail poorly. Or rather, fail really hard. It fails well. It's It can be very good at failing. Despite the inherent contradiction of that statement. What's not failing, however, is Farrah's defense, which will be possibly able to stop this Akron scouting. The Octopod just getting out of the way, actually, I suppose it is kind of failing, because the Akron is going to be able to scout out enough, seeing what's going on, seeing there's still just economy going on, no tech or anything. Farrah doing nothing tricky or fast. Cranber I'm not sure why he's focusing on the Implodal Past right now. He might be trying to see what's going on. I guess he's not trying to see what's going on in the Implodal Past with the Akron, but not able to do much else. Just double-checking the scouting, I suppose, making sure that nothing else has happened, nothing fishy has happened. And... Of course, he is getting hit by that Octopod eventually, so Cron Admiral will have to worry about this, and actually getting hit by Car, apparently. No, this... Those infantry coming in? Sorry, this damage in the timeline. I'm not sure what is causing this. And neither is Cronaver, so he's double checking. You see, the Octo is attacking his own base, taking out one of the resource processors, at least closing it up. Actually, this is one change. The resource processors now close at 200 HP instead of 150. So they are slightly less resilient than they used to be, actually, slightly more resilient than they used to be, but they are stopped from harvesting sooner. And the Octo getting destroyed, almost killing the Marine, but not quite. However, taking out a resource processor, which is very valuable, the Octo definitely paid for itself right there. The Octo is half the cost of resource processor and just managed to kill one only at the cost of his life. Which, while it's a pretty big cost for the Octo, is only 45 liquid crystal for... Actually, no, it's less than that. They, they dropped the price in Octos. But I can't see it right now because there's no generating savvy. 42 LC! Yes, for everyone else it's 42 liquid crystal. That Octo died valiantly. And this ATHC is coming up to try to avenge that. And Cronheimer rebuilding that resource processor, but still slightly behind. Now Ferreter moving ahead with economy and getting a decent bubble wrap as well with the Octopod and the Reefs. This ATHC will be of no use. These ATHCs will be great for map control if he uses the Marine, which is a Cronheimer, uses his Marines to get around the map and scout around a bit if he has his Marines around her. I don't see his Marines around here anywhere. He's... Possibly retreated them. No, that's a new Marine. I think he's lost his infantry. He appears to have lost his early infantry. He does have ATCs now. Moving in for an attack. Very foolish one at that. Won't be able to really deal with the Octopod effectively, but he could try. Who knows? He might prove me wrong. Four ATCs isn't necessarily a pushover force, but against that many Octopods, I don't hold out much hope. However, this is a point where I would suggest that Cron Emmer should go and expand a bit. Now set up some RPs around here, or maybe over here. This expansion probably won't be scouted out ever. It should be safe. Now the HTCs are coming in. One of the HTCs is a bit further in front and will be su will begin to the Arcticus first, hitting that and getting hit by the Octopod first. And very early Pharopod. I can't believe I didn't notice this. Very, very early Spire. Well, actually, you know, normal time Spire, but much earlier than the last game. Pharopod up and cloaked. ATCs, of course, are detectors and not bad against air, but. Still, with the Octopod there, it's going to be difficult. And Cron Aberrant, moving them around, not moving them forward. It looks like he's trying to get him in a position to intercept that Pharopod, and he will not be able to do so. The Pharopod moving to the expansion I mentioned, I was exactly wrong. This expansion was the first thing the Ferret was going to scout out. He's He has played this map before, apparently, since this is the expansion that players will go to. So Cron Aberrant actually not going for any expansions apparently was the wise move. Because Ferreter knows this map well enough to know what he can expect from his opponents, or could possibly expect from his opponents. Could expect from the commentator at any rate later on. I mean, this is a time travel game after all. And there we go. Actually, Ferreter is going to be intercepted. This Farapod getting hit by the ATCs. The other ATCs not stopping to deal with it. Crime realizes what's going on and jumps back to deal with it. Ferreter, from his point of view, is just getting a bit more going with his economy and. Covering it with the Pharopod, able to take care of one of the ATCs, but of course ATCs can't attack, really just a matter of Cronheimer microing them into position. And it looks like he will... may do that? Hard to say. The Pharopod is trying to deal with these ATCs and will be able to do... No, will not be able to do so. The ATCs getting into position this time around, but Ferreter will probably change this up. Jumping back about five seconds, Ferreter is in fact running his Pharopod into a good position, getting a position where only one ATC can hit it and able to kill it off for basically free. 
who went back into the base of the ATCs following along in hot pursuit, but able to get in close enough to heal, and a second Pharopod will be following it up. The Autopod should be able to take care of the ATCs, and the ATCs are going down in no time. Crown Amherst, on the other hand, about 10 seconds down from here, getting more ATHCs. I really recommend getting Machinery Attack right now and getting tanks. At this point, ATHCs are only going to be used for detection with the Pharopods, but tanks are going to be the way he's going to get out of this, or Lancers, maybe. Tanks are the only ones that come to mind. Mar tanks wouldn't really work with the Pharopods. That's pretty much the counter right there. And this is not looking good for Cron Aberrant. And also not for my streaming. Why is my streaming going above 600 kilobits per second? I, I don't know. Open broadcast software is being a bit silly right now. It's streaming way too much. And I'm dropping a ton of frames. It's supposed to max out at 600 kilobits per second. Yes, like I said, my upload rate is not particularly good. It's a geographical problem. Sort of. It's called I'm in Canada. There are only three ISPs. Anyway. Actually, two in any region of the country. But... Second factory coming up for Cron Aberrant, and... Still... Oh, there we go! Tanks! There we go! Right there, I called it. Building up eight... Well, I should say tank. There we go, tanks. Here's the second one, being built up right now. But, of course, there are pharopods, plural, and there have been for some time. Meaning Ferreter is in a great position right now to just go for an assault. Got his bubble wrap nicely set. I've got a dome at the front, too, just in case. Of course, he doesn't have any expansions, though neither does Kron Aberrant. He's still ahead in terms of economy. Kron Aberrant definitely set up for defense. And these pharopods, one of them on its own would not be able to deal with this, but two of them probably would be fine. And he's... Research process is moving out of position, but the ATHCs will be supporting them. The Pharopod actually will be going down quite, quite quickly. Ferreter, however, half a second, or half a minute down from here, no, full minute down from here, he has plenty of time to get this Pharopod out of the way and into safety of his own base and his reefs. Does not appear to be doing so at this point. Pharopod moving around and... Okay, apparently according to the people in the chat, the stream's not too bad for smoothness. I'm just getting, it looks like drop warnings or lag warnings on the broadcaster software itself. There's a little green box in the bottom right corner that's periodically going, turning yellow and orange and red. And then another little text box that says drop frames. And the drop frames is, one is much more irrelevant, though I've only dropped about 6% of my frames, which, while not great, isn't terrible. Anyhow, not a big concern. The big concern is what's going on in the game. Because we'll be going on YouTube eventually, and that will have just fine frame rate. Farpod going down. Crown getting rid of the ATHCs, and Ferrer not taking advantage of that distraction to do anything economically, though he... Well, anyway, he's definitely in a position to do so. And never mind, he is in fact doing exactly that, moving towards the bottom right corner, with the triad go or duo going into a nice wide spot right by a little hole in the ground with the lava. Likely, well, might get scouted. Anything going down this ramp would probably scout it, which means anything going straight down from Cameron's base, any Lancers or Frigates or anything that might be flying, will spot it. But right now, Cameron is not focused on air units at all. He's focused on counter air, he's focused on getting rid of these far pods, which he's managing to do pretty well. The tanks are helping out with that. The ATCs, of course, as detection, which they do well. Now, Ferret, of course, Actually, not of course. I'm surprised Ferret is not built up from here. I think he's focused heavily on this expansion attempt, but he should probably get another Pharopod or two. Or he's saving up for Chronoporting, which seems the most likely option for the amount of money he's floating and the proportion in which he's floating it. I do expect Chronoporting will be coming up soon, but I'm wrong. In fact, he is building more Octopods. I'm a bit surprised he waited that long to build those Octopods. He could have built them one at a time when he had money earlier on. And Crime managing to successfully expand over to this natural expansion. This is an until pass, by the way, so Ferreter will need to Chronoport to deal with it. So, successful expansion for Crime Or maybe not, there is a Pharopod coming in here, but the Pharopod... No, this is actually terrible! Crime will be losing this expansion, or at least getting his RPs damaged from it. So the Pharopod doing well in his little last little assault in the until pass. Well... I think Ferret is just going for a massive patrol. He's apparently very worried about a large attack, and he is going for a massive patrol. Not focused on attacking with these Octo Forces here. And possibly a distraction to get attention away from this little expansion being built up here in the bottom right corner of the map. 
while Crimer. Oh, wait, there we go. There's what I was listening for. The Octos being built up. And the Farquad having gotten rid of those RP is a bit of a waste. Crimer losing that, which is unfortunate, but managing to get rid of the Farquad regardless. Now it's a bit more safe to expand, and at this point, Ferreter has no Farquads. He's lost both of his Farquads, built no more Farquads, and just focused entirely on base defense with Octopods. This is a bit of an odd move. Granted, Ferreter has prepared himself fairly well for defending against Octopods. Is he building more HFCs? No, he is not. He's focusing entirely on tanks, so if this last HFC goes down, then Farquads will once again be powerful. At this point, however, it wouldn't be too hard to get up. Well, I guess Tornados wouldn't be especially useful for the cost. HHCs would still be more cost-effective as for detectors. And Chronoport going for an assault. I was going to say going for a Chronoport, but he's not going for a Chronoport. He's not have money for that. He doesn't have tech for that. And neither does Ferreter. Ferreter having spent all his money on Octopods, which are being moved for an assault. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Ferreter going for an attack. Getting intercepted by Chronoport. Mid-ground battle and Chronoport losing one of his tanks, but not his HHC. His tank is going for fighting against the Octopods and losing horribly. The Octopods managing to get a nice encirclement going on, getting rid of all of the tanks. However, losing two of their number, not a big deal for for the amount of cost being wasted and the amount of... In fact, the crime was out of position there, moving his forces back into position, however, getting himself a better lineup. So the Octopods are going to be slightly more vulnerable. However, losing one of his ATHCs, he has a second ATHC, however, meaning Coconuts will not be able to take him out too quickly, but... His HHC is right at the front, not a good idea, but he has defensive advantage, getting some resources for building more tanks. If he gets his tanks up and in position, he should be able to take care of the Octopods should he position himself well, which means going in from the side right now. I'm not sure if he's aware of that. I don't think he sees what Ferreter has. And Ferreter actually moving in instead, further down, getting rid of the ATHCs, but losing the Octos, not a big deal though. The ATHCs are the big thing to get rid of. No Farbots coming up, however, Ferreter not taking advantage of this, doesn't have the money to do so, in fact. And Chronomer continues to build up tanks. And no, Ferreter retreating. Not a terrible idea, though he does... That does mean he won't be able to get rid of the HTC. No, he's not retreating. He's merely getting into a better position. The tank's not quite able to get rid of the Octopods effectively. But not doing a terrible job either. Some of them were out of position, and that does mean the Octopods get the ultimate advantage. However, Chronomer is closer. He is building up tanks, or he was building up tanks regularly. He has stopped building up tanks regularly, losing the cash needed to do so. From his point of view, he has won, but Ferreter getting the last word on this one, keeping four Octopods alive and able to get rid of this expansion to the north. Now, Ferreter, on the other hand, has not expanded at all. In fact, he is running low on cash. Sorry, he has expanded here, but otherwise he's running low on cash. He has not moved these RPs, that's for sure. And this expansion will be quite safe right about now, definitely given the four Octopods keeping Cryomarin quite busy for the next several minutes, if not for the rest of the game, since this game might be quite short. And indeed it is! Cryomarin throwing in the towel, and that is our game. And I think we can call it a night tonight. I hope you enjoy this cast, and I will be casting again on Saturday. This is an unusual Monday cast, because Saturday was really busy, but I should be able to cast this Saturday just fine. And see you all then. Good night for now.